Welcome back to another episode in the knife shop. Um, last episode we were working on our handle material for the Furrier's Rasp knife. Um, I just got those off the table. They're looking pretty, pretty good. Um, we got the three layers of um, liner material glued to these blocks. Um, and I think for the most part, they look pretty solid. I don't see any gaps really anywhere around them. So um, I think it's going to turn out to be pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> before we jump on to the uh, basically tracing this out and cutting it out on the bandsaw, um, we still have a little bit of prep work to do with this knife. Um, right now, the, the last thing we did to this was temper it, um, and so it's got that kind of a straw finish left on it. Um, <clears throat> so before we uh, continue with the handle, I want to address this. We're basically going to use probably a medium Scotch-Brite belt to get that bronze off of there. Um, we also still have a little bit of a thick edge. Um, <clears throat> it's probably hard to see in the camera. You can see right up front here though. Um, that's still quite a bit thicker than it should be. So once we get done with the Scotch-Brite belt, we'll probably throw on um, maybe an 80 grit or 120 grit, we'll see. But uh, I'd like to take off just a tiny bit more and thin that down just a hair um, before we do the handle. Um, and then that way, once we get the handle on, um, we won't have a ton of work to do. We'll mainly just have to sharpen it. Um, so I think uh, we'll probably go that direction. So first we'll run over to the uh, belt grinder and do some of that. All right, so we're gonna go with this uh, medium Scotch-Brite belt uh, to start with. And that's basically gonna help us just kind of get that straw appearance off of the knife um, and then that way we'll be able to see kind of what we're working with too as far as uh, the edge goes um, so once we get it on here we'll just run it over and uh, we'll see where that gets us So you can probably tell that uh, my 1x30 really uh, is not the best uh, knife making belt grinder. Uh, in fact, this is about as crappy as it gets. Um, sometimes it won't even start, especially with these Scotch-Brite belts. I've done some modifications to it back here. I've had to take the dust cover off and things. Uh, I know it's probably hard to see, but... Uh, there's a little spring um, back here that kind of has uh, tension on it. So there's some areas that you have to modify to be even be able to fit these um, Scotch-Brite belts on. So yeah, it's pretty slow moving, especially for a knife this size um, and one that's already hardened. It just uh, really has some trouble r running through it sometimes. Um, but anyway, that kind of gives you a quick idea of uh, where we're trying to go with this, um, just to kind of brighten it back up. Um, and then uh, once I do that, we'll probably, like I said, run through um, a few belts trying to thin out this edge a little bit. So we're going to go with this uh, 120 grit belt. We'll throw that on and uh, probably go ahead and try to thin this edge out a little bit.
And I think it's worth noting here, just with a couple of passes, um, we're starting to thin it down um, quite a bit more than what it was. Um, and you can tell in certain areas, it's kind of um, getting a little thinner than others. So here's probably the thinnest spot up towards the tip. Um, not quite at the tip, but just before. So I'm going to need to concentrate the passes in the thicker parts um, to kind of thin those out. So I'll do a little bit more of that and probably cut it back on when we're there. All right, so now that we've taken the time to go through and thin this out a little bit, um, we're pretty much at a good point to where once we get the um, handle scales on there, we'll pretty much just have to um, kind of put the final or secondary bevel on there. Um, here's kind of a close-up of, of the edge now. It's definitely not a super fine thin point, but we're pretty much pretty much there. Um, I think just a few passes with uh, the sharpening belts will get us there. Um, so we are now pretty much finished with this. Um, I also took a little bit of time to go around um, the outside of the blade on the top um, and just smooth that out, uh, try to get some of the scratches out of that. We'll be doing more of that kind of in the fit and finish work, uh, but just took some time to go all the way around it. Um, so now our next step is basically kind of cleaning these up um, and getting them ready. We're still in, um, they're still in this condition here, which uh, it's been actually several days. I haven't really been out here um, in a few days because it's been really hot and haven't had the time. But um, our next step for these is to basically go through and we're going to uh, sand off uh, just kind of the, the extra stuff sticking out there. We're going to go and get the glue spots off. Um, pretty much just put them back into um, good rectangles so that we don't have any extra hanging over. Um, and then at that point, we should be ready to um, put the knife on here and trace out uh, where the handle is and then um, use the bandsaw to cut off the extra. Um, the other thing I'm going to be focusing on is kind of on the back side here. I'm sure it's hard to see, but we've got some uh, glue or epoxy that's kind of come over here. Um, and I'm going to clean all this up to get this back to being flat um, so that there's no issues with that. Um, so yeah, and that's basically where we're at. I'll take a little bit of time to um, do that and then we'll be ready to trace and cut it out. So I guess it's worth mentioning too that during this step you probably want to be careful um, the epoxy has a tendency to warm up and heat up when you're doing this um, and we want to try to avoid getting it too hot. Um, I feel like when it gets hot it has a tendency to kind of lose its gripping power. Um, so as I'm doing this I'm basically just going to be careful not to get this too warm. Um, you can avoid doing that by using a fresh belt that's not gummed up um, I'll probably use my eraser to clean it up um, or just using a higher grit, uh, something like a 60 maybe or an 80 uh, or a 120. This is a 120, but um, anything higher than that, it has a tendency to warm it up quicker. Um, so you just want to be careful that uh, you don't overdo it during this step or you might lose a little bit of this uh, epoxy uh, grabbing onto the side. Um, but we can now, down, now that we're past this point, we can kind of see what it will look like where we have the thick white, the black, and then another little thin white. So I think that'll look pretty good. Um, I'm going to keep going here and um, I'll probably kick it back on once we got them cleaned up. So 
now that we have our scales uh, trimmed up and they're pretty even with one another, um, go ahead and throw a piece of uh, blue painter's tape onto the spine of them. Um, and that just kind of keeps them together. Um, that's a pretty good trick that I learned from um, Eric over at the River of Experience. Um, I really like this idea because it allows you to basically be able to um, keep them, you know, pretty well in line. Um, and still, if you need to get in there to uh, clear stuff out, you can. Or um, it basically just brings it right back to the home position. Um, but anyway, uh, now that we have this together, basically figure out where we want um, our, our handle to sit on uh, the wood. And we're going to trace out a line around the knife. Um, and then we'll set up the bandsaw and um, mark, mark a line around it and use the bandsaw to cut it out. Um, I think before we do that, we'll probably throw the knife up on here like this um, and I might use some more tape just to secure this um, on either side and then go ahead and drill the holes um, and that way you know I'll be able to just have more to grip onto with the tape and it'll be nice and flat and even um, and I think if I do the holes first and then cut it out it'll just be a little bit easier um, I don't really know if there's a better way, one over the other, whether you trim them and then do the holes, or if you do the holes and then trim them, I'm not really sure, but um, we're going to go ahead and give this a shot and see how it does. So um, I'm going to go ahead and basically just get um, a marker and go around the edge and get it marked, and then we'll drill the holes real quick. So we got the um, outline of the knife around here. We put some tape um, just to kind of help secure it. And then we have clamped the entire thing to the table. Um, I've also got this uh, wood as a backer so that when the drill goes through the other side, um, hopefully it won't uh, blow out that end. Uh, but anyway, yeah, now that we've got that done, we'll probably go ahead and drill this side and we'll place the um, pin into it and then we'll drill the other one and then we'll do the middle one last. Um, I also don't have a drill press so um, it can be a little nerve-wracking trying to keep this drill straight um, but if you take your time um, and really just kind of look at it from two different angles and slowly go typically it works out pretty good. Um, a drill press would be a really good investment, especially for doing um, knife making and other stuff. I just haven't got around to getting one. Alright, so that's one hole done. And like I said, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and throw um, this pin stock down in it just to basically keep the two scales from uh, wiggling while you get this second hole in. Alright, and now that we got this one in, uh, we'll go ahead and use another quarter inch drill bit um, since I have not cut my pins yet. This one's a little shy of a quarter inch, but it should be good enough. Um, and then we will move our clamp out of the way here. And we'll go ahead and drill this middle one. Just like that, we now have three um, holes drilled in our scales. Alright, so now we're to the point where we have the pin holes drilled. Um, we got a couple of pins 
in the front and the back one just to kind of secure them um, as we cut uh, around the, the line. Um, and I feel like this is a pretty good way, like I said, to minimize the amount of sanding that we'll have to do um, once we throw them or get them epoxied on to the handle. Um, so we'll go ahead and turn this on and get it cut. there we go just like that <clears throat> we have uh, our scales cut out and they're definitely uh, definitely shaped more to fit the handle than before and hopefully we won't have as much um, as much grinding to do now um, so yeah it's a pretty cool way to kind of prep the scales and minimize the amount of finish work that you have. Um, these are pretty thick still, so you can see we'll have a lot to kind of grind off as far as thinning them out, um, but we won't have a whole lot of uh, extra stuff to remove once we do get them glued up. So now that we've made it here, our next step is to basically just take this off, um, kind of re-prep it and grind it and get it ready for the glue up. All right, so you could spend a little more time if you wanted to kind of smoothing out all around this. Um, I think that that's kind of a waste of time because we're obviously going to have to trim a very small amount off of this after we glue it up. Um, the only area that we're going to be concerned about is the very front. Um, once we get this glued onto the knife, this will be next to impossible to... Uh, you know, run it up onto the belt grinder or do any sort of finish work. So um, before we do the glue up, we're really just going to concentrate on this front part here um, and we're going to get it basically sanded down to our final finish um, of whatever grit we decide to go with. Um, I say we, but I really mean me. Uh, so I think, you know, what, what I'll probably end up doing is going with a 120 grit belt here just to smooth it out. Um, and I might kind of rock it back and forth at a 45 here and kind of create just some angles on either side. Um, and then probably take it over to the vise here, throw it in the vise and maybe finish it off hand sanding it up to maybe a 220 or something like that. Um, we'll just see what it looks like. Uh, I think 220 is pretty good, maybe 400 grit if we need to take it up to the next um, the next grit. But uh, yeah, for the most part, that should be about all we'll really need to do before we glue these up. So really all I'm trying to do here is to remove the um, the lines. I don't know if it'll zoom in all that well, but basically where the bandsaw has come in and created rough lines from the cuts, um, we're just going through and smoothing those out of there. You can still kind of see a couple here, so we've got a little bit more to go, but um, basically just getting this smooth to where you can't really see any of those lines. Um, and then we'll probably, um, you know, angle these in just a little bit. So I'm going to do that and then uh, we'll kick it back on uh, when we're ready for the glue up. Okay, so we are ready to uh, throw this knife together, throw the handles onto the knife. Um, we're going to be using a JB Weld 
um, quick set five minute epoxy it's just a two-part deal this is pretty much what I use for all my knives um, and I'm also going to be using um, just a little drop of this black leather dye um, I'll probably dip this popsicle stick in it to get some of the dye on it and then use that to stir it all up um, and basically my thinking behind that is whenever we go to put the scales on here you can see on this side of the blade we still have all these file um, marks on here and um, the last one I did I didn't I don't think I used any um, leather stains so um, my thinking is if I do that you'll you'll kind of see the uh, the epoxy have a little bit of that black color and I think it'll end up looking a little better than just kind of the dirty, uh, muddy color that it has. Um, so you probably won't see a whole lot of it, but I'm thinking we're going to try that out um, just to kind of, uh, you know, get around all these little cuts uh, where the file is at. Um, I could go through and grind it all, but I don't really think that's necessary. Um, and in fact, I feel like having these in here is only going to help the epoxy have a place to stick, basically. So um, anyway, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to get it mixed up really good, as usual, and we'll get it stuck together. I only have a little tiny bit in this one left, which probably isn't going to be enough. So um, I like to try to get the most out of these things. But anyway, there's one and we'll probably end up doing a little bit more out of this one. Just so we have enough. Uh, you always look at it and say, oh, that's going to be way more than I need. But I find myself... Um, always going back at the end and uh, squirting a little bit more so hopefully that'll be enough this time um, it's a pretty healthy amount I feel like um, so yeah we're gonna go ahead and just basically dip the popsicle stick in here just enough to where it's kind of dripping um, and introduce just a few drops into the epoxy is really um, all it takes I'm go ahead and set that down um, I feel like it kind of thins out the epoxy as well um, the last time I used a dye a leather dye in a glue up um, I felt like it uh, didn't get as hard as quick um, that may have just been a coincidence I don't know uh, but it might help to kind of slow it down some which I don't think is all that bad so give you a little bit more time to get this uh, really thoroughly mixed up I think it's super important to get it mixed up well um, and that way you know you've got a good bond I'll try to bring you guys in a little bit closer here there we go all right, so we're just going to start with a little bit of a coat on this back side here. I think it's worth noting, too, you can also uh, kind of see the uh, areas that you're hitting when, it, when the epoxy is stained a certain color, which is certainly helpful. Uh, gives you an idea of where you're at. Um, and where the epoxy isn't, which is good. So, uh, and really on this side, we really just kind of want to get it a thin, nice thin layer. Um, is really all we're after, anyway. So go ahead and insert these two here first, and then uh, probably what I'll do is go ahead and put quite a bit on the inside of the knife here on the side that it's going on to make sure that we've got uh, basically enough kind of down into those grooves which I think will help it out quite a bit.
this file definitely has uh, a lot of areas for the epoxy to go so I guess it was a good thing that we mixed up quite a bit and in fact now that I throw this on here I can tell that maybe it's not enough <laughs> might end up needing to put some more on I'm not sure yet we'll just see how it goes but anyway I'll try to get this part on here real fast Whenever you have a really tight fit up like this, sometimes it's kind of a pain in the butt to get it started. Um, you kind of just want to make sure that you're going in kind of at the same. So I pretty much ran out of space on my phone during the glue up, but we did get it finished. Um, so there it is. And that's pretty much uh, it for this episode. It went pretty well. Um, the next episode will consist of basically uh, finish grinding the handle and forming the handle. Um, and then it'll be sharpening it. And then it'll be a, pretty much a finished knife. So I uh, appreciate you watching. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>